to get told you're going to change head gaskets out it may not mean what you're thinking. Oh, okay. A little hole. Hey, Doug, what are you doing? I am working on Charlie's heads. So, how um, many times have we done this? <laughs> this is number two. We don't get it right until we do it twice. It's just the way it works. Look at all we've learned about toileting today. This is toilet training. <laughs> You just know somebody's put a skull head on one of these things. And there are no leaks. Hey Doug. Okay. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful. <laughs> Never had so much fun. And this may not even be the spot where it's bad. You said it looked burned though, right? Well you see the picture, it's not burned, it looks like it's bare. This is the wire coming down from the stern light. You can see that red wire has a spot on it right there where it doesn't have any insulation. And it's got a short back this way somewhere, so that may be it. Maybe another one. Yeah, if you can believe it, the wire has been fished up the inside of the stanchion over there. Now we just wait to see if it comes on. No, is it on? Okay. Yay! Well, it's 1.30 in the morning. There is Osprey. Right now the bumpers are all above the dock, but the wind is blowing the boat away from the dock, so no worries. So what's happened here is the full moon has brought the tide right up to the top of the dock. Charlie uses a free app called Tides, and you can find stations in your area that have the tide information. And see, right there we are, just past the peak tide. So he's not only been watching this on multiple stations around us, but he watches the tides here because just 30 minutes difference could make a little bit of difference in how the tide is affecting you right where you are. And it's important because his draft is just barely gonna get us out of here. And this is why the high tide is important. We are only half a foot off the bottom with the keel. Lovely windy day, so you can't hear any of the audio. Well, it's the end of another day at sailing camp, and today we learned about electronics. And you gotta get a load of this. That's the switch panel. AC at the bottom, the rest of it is DC. Ah, oh, look at all this stuff back here. There are uh, shunts and uh, solenoids to close the engine batteries together with the house batteries and it just keeps on going these are the uh, nav stations so chart plotter and radar and the radios here and a charger for the batteries back there from ac we're going to put one in for the solar panel that's what this cable is going in for and i've been inside the batteries here today there's a big shunt down the side there's four of these stacked back that direction and three down here so those are 12 volt starters these are six volt tied in series and parallel for the house battery then there's another one up front for the bow thruster and there's another one somewhere and i gotta make a point too for all of you that say you gotta use 10 wire on a boat none of this is 10 it's 40 years old and it hasn't been touched so if my non 10 wire and seeker lasts 40 years i'll be over 100. it can be someone else's problem And it doesn't look like it, but we're making progress here too. And this thing was a fascinating discovery last night. This is a uh, turnbuckle, big stain, the steel thing. And look at that, just rusted apart. All the rest of them on the boat, perfect shape, right? This one is buried behind a closet. Yes, behind a closet. You empty the closet, you take the back wall out, and then there's another compartment back there. You crawl into that. We were running wire and uh, happened to bump into it, and it just popped right off. So that is high on the list let me show you what it does somebody on facebook came with a good emergency fix is it just a trucker's tie down strap you know a ratcheting strap because that's what it does it pulls against the mast up above here's what one you can see looks like you see it's got a pad eye up there that mounts to the deck and then a turnbuckle there in the middle and it mounts down through a little wooden box and it's part of the standing rigging that's uh cables that don't move around the rest of them you call it running rigging you can actually you know tweak the mast over one side or the other standing rigging is just there all the time and that's actually a compression post for the mast i'll go show you the mast so there's two masts on this boat and the forward one is the one that's used the most 
the one that's the problem is the mizzen mast is back here in the back and it comes down and that compression post is right underneath there and this is where that turnbuckle connects onto down below see it standing rigging is cables that go up hit that spreader and hold this mast in place so you can see why charlie would be a little uncomfortable if it was to break right exactly i figure we got one other mast and it's a bigger one and opposed to standing rigging is running rigging and see this line coming down here it's attached to this block and tackle so you can actually use it to flex the mast or stabilize it or move it off to one side i'm making all that up because i don't fucking know i have unstayed mass on seeker just a good old stick of steel coming out of the boat now this is the controller for the solar panels my job this morning is putting that in and a couple little breakers into this panel. The most nerve-wracking things you can do is drill a hole in your boat, and that's what he's getting ready to do. We're putting an antenna for uh, Iridium satellite. That way, the Predict Wind program can pick up new data while we're sailing along. That is a cool system. Yeah. A lot of pretty boats around here, but somehow I like watching the work barge better. That'd be a fun job. Good job this morning. See if this kayak holds air. Kayak looks fine. Now we're in the main salon. Look what we found down here on the side. That is lead. They are trimming the boat. And that makes sense is the center of the boat. And that's probably oh that's pretty good bars, at least a hundred and two hundred pounds there. And check this out, when they put the bow thruster in, they drilled holes through the hull and cut these sections out. That is the thickness of the hull up front, and you see it's not cord, it's all solid fiberglass. If you're going to buy a fiberglass boat, that's the kind of hull you'll want. This is the forward berth, and everything structural on this boat is always hidden away behind some teak. Man, that is structural. Wow. That is a piece of stainless, I think. That is amazing. That's all the structural for the uh, uh, standing rigging up above us. It's a uh, chain plate. Lightning holes in it, but you kind of think, why well, bother? This thing's massive. That's 3 8 inch thick and custom welded together. So up above here on the deck would be a pad eye where the standing rigging for the main mast is attached. And look, this thing passes two-thirds of the way down the side of the hole. Now, I know I'm in the minority here, but I think that's really pretty. I like the teak is nice, but that's gorgeous. Maybe it's because of the beautiful welding they did down that. Nice. New water maker in. Okay, this is the main salon of Osprey. The first thing I learned about sailing boats is, uh, <laughs> I was always confused as why people on my boat had trouble figuring out which way was forward, which way was aft. Where's the bow, where's the transom, where's the stern? And uh, getting on this boat, I understand that completely because it took me three days to figure out when I'm crawling around someplace, which way is forward. First off, this one has two companionways. The engine's behind this one, but then the captain's berth back here has another one that goes into the aft cockpit there. That's a nice one because you can come in and out of that one with rain and wind and storms and you're safe and protected. And excuse all the mess, Charlie has been changing and moving things around and getting moved into this boat, so it's a wreck. Master cabin back here has its own head and it's got a hatchway through there to the generator. It's got a hatchway through here to uh, the back of the engine. But he's got his own desk with a printer. And this ladder here can be removed and behind this pile of sails is a hatchway that goes back underneath the uh, cockpit and you can access the quadrant and also there's an electrical breakout panel back there. Only closet on the boat and that's the one that has the hatch in the back of it that you go around the corner and you find that broken stay. And that is being made for us today in one day. Seti, this table folds out both directions, another seti and the galley. So looking backwards into the salon, you can sleep somebody there, you can sleep somebody here. Then coming forward, a double berth here. I'm in there right now. And a little skinny one here. And which berth you use depends on which way you're sailing. If you're, you know, heeled over this way, you take that berth. That guy's probably on watch, so you just sleep where he did. The head now, which I'm very familiar with. And the forward locker, which is kind of a mess right now, but it's also the shop. Every boat has one of these. You know, everybody's going to have a vice somewhere and a little table to work on and a tool chest. And Charlie has jammed in a water maker in here, so there's the pre-filters on that side. Right underneath the tool chest has a high-pressure pump 
and there's the back side of the control panel. And mirrors don't make figuring all this out any easier. I, I was moving that bucket and trying to set it over there. You, you can't, okay? Now the aft bathroom has its own shower stall, but up here on the forward, you just shower it in the whole head. And this whole floor down here drains into a pan and picks it up. So if you gotta sit in the floor because of the weather, then you can sit in the floor and take a shower. And that's pretty much all I know about her at this point. She's a uh, German designed, built in Taiwan 40 years ago. She's traveled 90,000 miles with the uh, owners that she had before Charlie. That was, they bought it new. So uh, unfortunately he passed away. So she sold the boat and uh, she'll probably come down and go sail with Charlie some too. The owner was an engineer and it shows this boat has all kinds of cool little gadgets on it and well thought out design. So it's, it's a pleasure to be on board. Yeah, that's tomorrow's job. I think we're going to put that gadget way up there. The rest of this afternoon is scrubbing decks. Look at that mess. Birds. Here's a good morning routine to get your adrenaline going. And he's got it done. There's the anemometer working. This is the boat. That's where the wind's coming from and it's only one knot right now. We have all the fancy uh, satellite information for weather but you know, most boats still carry around a barometric pressure gauge and a clock and this clock is not your normal clock. Our shifts here are four on four off and that's pretty common for most boats. It sounds horrible but I'm told you can get used to it. So the shifts are 12 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 12 and around the clock again. And this one will tell you where you are in your shift. Two times like that means one hour has passed since the beginning of your watch. This is the bottom of the hour. Hey, one and a half hours passed. Now a lot of boats have clocks. A lot of them don't have that fancy clock. That means it's time to figure out why the forward navigation lights aren't on. Okay, well that battery shelf that I was messing in earlier had actually slid over and it pinched some wires. And I got in there and pulled it back off those wires. One of those wires was broken and one of those wires was the navigation lights up front. So I put bolts in that tray so it won't slide back over, but we're going to have to get back in there and fix that wire another time. The quick fix is to borrow power from the cabin light circuit, put that on the switch, and that turns on our nav lights. Yeah, I'll take you back in the hole here. And the new stainless steel piece is fitted in. Look how wide she is. That is a big beam on that boat. She's uh, like uh, the Spray, which was Joshua Slocum's boat. First guy to sail solo around the world. So that's it for us. Tomorrow we set out to Antigua.